Luigi's Mansion 3 is out, and once more it features Luigi attempting to overcome his fear of darkness, ghosts, spiders, and general existence in order to save his friends from the clutches of King Boo. At least that's what the trailers for the game would lead you to believe, but they miss out on one important thing. Money. If there's one thing that the Last Resort Hotel has more of than ghosts, it's cold hard cash. Coins, bills, golden statue, things, in almost every corner, under every couch cushion, seemingly inside of every breakable object, is a load of moolah, and that game expects you to collect all that money in order to get a good rank at the end of the game. But what if we didn't? In this video, I'm going to answer the question, can you beat Luigi's Mansion 3 without collecting any money? Of course, to do that, I'll be spoiling the whole game, so continue at your own risk. That said, the game starts off with Luigi, Mario, and Peach and their trio of toads on the way to the Last Resort Hotel. Oh, and also there's Polterpup. He's a good boy. Almost immediately, things take a turn for the worse, because it turns out that Luigi has once again fallen for a trap laid by ghosts, this time led by hotel owner Helen Gravely, who is attempting to collect Luigi and his friends to appease good old King Boo. After a brisk jog away from King Boo and a fall down a laundry chute, the game starts proper in the basement. It's here that we can start to see all that dreaded cash tucked away under every nook and cranny. As long as we're not tempted, we can easily reach the garage cashless where we can obtain the Poltergust G00. This is the main tool Luigi has throughout the game, so let me quickly cover its components. Like any good vacuum, it can suck stuff up. It can also blow air out to push items and ghosts away. If you press both trigger buttons simultaneously, Luigi can perform a burst that briefly propels him into the air while sending out a large gust of wind in all directions. The last of the features of the Poltergust is the stroll bulb or flashlight, which is on by default but can be activated to charge a blinding flash of light to stun ghosts and activate certain switches. With that quick tutorial done, we'll leave the garage where I'd like to quickly discuss how this game deals with game saves. You see, all you get is auto saves. Every time you move through a door, or generally transition from one room to another, the game will save itself. It always keeps your last two autosaves as well as one autosave from the start of whatever part of the story you're in. This is important because it means that someone trying to avoid all that cash for some reason, like myself, can simply quit out to the main menu and reload the last autosave whenever we goof up and collect money. Like for example, on the stairs leading up from the basement, there's some dollar bills here which act as a handy tutorial in learning a few things. Firstly, the physics engine is a strange and mysterious beast, which we can only begin to understand. The other is that even allowing a few atoms of Luigi's clothing to come into contact with money is the same as stuffing it right into your pockets. I don't think that makes sense, but that's that. And lastly, there are two types of money in this game, and it's important to know thy enemy. There's spooky money, which you'll find just sitting there. These will henceforth be known as spook bucks. Spook bucks can be moved all around, but they will not despawn, so your only option is to avoid them at all costs. The other type of money you will encounter gets spawned in by destroying furniture, opening chests, and so on. These will be known as scare coins. I know it's a dumb name, but you never know when scare coins might jump out, so beware. But much like the shock of a jump scare, scare coins will quickly fade away, so that's always an option. That said, once we reach the lounge, we'll go through a quick battle against some ghosts where the polter pup will bully us into taking out some of the ghosts with the slam. Slamming ghost is a useful tool, but it will also spawn in scare coins which should be avoided at all costs. Going forward, I'm going to only touch on the key points of interest for the sake of brevity. If there's rooms or ghost fights I don't mention, assume I painstakingly avoided every bit of cash while defeating the ghosts without using the slam because that's what I did. <laughs> Recording this video took way too many hours. That said, we get the key to the second floor of the lobby where we'll find Professor Egad trapped in a painting. He can only be set free using another game mechanic called the Dark Light, which is an attachment that lets Luigi reveal hidden objects as well as free objects from portraits. After obtaining this from the second floor storage room, Polterpup once again bullies Luigi into a tutorial where he has to use it on a painting full of money. This of course spawns scare coins which attempt to attack Luigi while he's stuck in his smug animation, but I found that by simply activating the dark light and stepping away, he could actually keep his wallet empty. From there, we save Professor E. Gad and escort him to the elevator, where we return to the basement garage. It's here that we have our first boss fight against Steward, the bellhop. This game has a lot of interesting boss fights with unique mechanics, but being a tutorial boss, the bellhop is basically a slightly bigger ghost, so he's pretty straightforward. Afterwards, Egad sets up his portable lab in the garage, which we'll be mostly ignoring. Our first task is to take the elevator up to floor 5, RIP Suites, 
where we must recover Egad's briefcase, which has been confiscated by Chambria, the maid. Our only way to take her out is to follow her from room to room and use a newly obtained suction shot to grab hold of the briefcase and slam it, and her, until she runs out of health. This can be a bit annoying as all the rooms she goes into are full of breakable objects, but as long as we're cautious with how often and where we place those slams, it's pretty simple to avoid all that money. Also, it's worth noting that this is where you can practice using the dark light to reveal ghostly traces of where the maid has been, because you're going to want to use this much later on with the game's multiple spooky hide and seek segments. By the way, that briefcase contained a special component that once added to Luigi's poltergeist allows him to spawn Gooigi, a gooey version of Luigi that has less health and melts upon contact with water, but is able to pass through pipes and certain barriers. While he can also collect money, which can cause its own issues, he'll be very handy throughout the run. Our next stop is Floor 3, the Hotel Shops. The boss here is Crawler, the security guard who has his button inside the office. We have to use Guiji in a number of the shops to keep swapping keys until we finally get the key to his office. It's worth noting that inside the shop marked with the heart, the possessed spade key hides inside of a secret storage room that contains, I think, the largest stack of coins in the game. This was the spooky sight in the run so far, but it turns out that there's just a collection of scare coins hiding in plain sight. You can very carefully blow away the coins bit by bit, and before long the little ghosties will come running out. With the shops behind us and the star key in hand, we can finally interrupt Crawler's lunch break and fight him head on. He does hide in a separate room so that you're required to use Guiji against his water gun, but as long as you just avoid that, it's a pretty simple fight. That button we got takes us to floor 2, the mezzanine, where we follow Polterpup into a dining hall. It's here that we face off against our first large group of ghosts. Without being able to freely slam, it can be hard to deal with multiple ghosts at once. However, I eventually found that by simply stunning a ghost, draining a little bit of its health, and then letting go, you could basically fend off a huge crowd without sacrificing your position. This can be important when you don't want to get pulled into the edge of the arena, where you pushed all those spook bucks. From there, we head directly into the kitchen where Chef Soulfle is burning some food. After using both Uigis to suck away the smoke, we're faced with a boss fight. His pan blocks our straw bulb and it hits pretty hard, but we can use the suction shot to grab hold and yank it away. From there, it's a pretty simple fight. Unlike with the previous buttons, this time when Luigi goes to grab it, a sneaky rat yoinks it from right in front of him. Our rat chase eventually leads us into a nearby lounge which has some golden spook bucks just sitting there, menacingly, nearby the pool table, so watch out for those. After a fight against some sneaky ghosts, we have to yank down the leftmost locker. Not the one in the middle though, it's covering a cache of cash. In my first attempt at this room, I mistakenly pulled down the middle locker and then the swing from the left locker actually dislodged some scare coins which fluttered down onto Luigi during the ensuing animation. It's very unfortunate, so only the left locker. Pulling that one does not create this issue. Our chase then leads to the bathrooms where Guiji has to move through a pipe into the adjacent room and then finally unalive the rats. Be careful though because each rat that gets flashed with the strobe bulb will burst into actual coins. Let's not think of the logic of how that works and just uh, continue on onto the elevator. On our way to our next destination, Egad interrupts us and asks Luigi to visit him down at the lab. It's there that he says, By the way, Luigi, you must be getting pretty good at exploring the hotel, am I right? Have you been sucking up stuff with the Poltergeist G00? Your pockets must be fit to bursting with all the money you picked up out there. Fret not, I have the perfect solution to your cumbersome currency conundrum. Just give it all to me. So, uh, it turns out that he opened up his very own shopping network where we can trade in all of the cash that we don't have for goods and services. He does decide to quite literally throw us a bone for free. It will basically revive Luigi once mid-battle, but I ended up wasting it later in the playthrough, so don't worry about that. While we're here, he'll also adjust the Poltergeist G00 so that it can detect booze hiding throughout the hotel. However, those are completely optional, so another minor spoiler, since this is my only place of the game so far, I've never actually seen a normal boo in this entire game. With that detour taken care of, we're off to floor 4. With this one, we can basically head straight into the actual stage and start the fight against Amadeus Wolfgeist. The first phase of the fight has him lifting up seats from the floor and slamming them down towards Luigi. There are scare coins that get left behind, but as long as you stick to the pathways, they'll be easily avoided until they despawn. There is also spook bucks laying around which should be pushed into the corners of the room. I'm realizing that these names are really, really dumb, but I'm sticking with it. In the second phase, a number of ballerina ghosts gang up on Luigi, but they're pretty easily dispatched. In the third phase, he possesses his piano and reignites nightmares of Big Boo's haunt from Super Mario 64. 
he can dish out some serious damage, but otherwise it's a pretty straightforward fight from here on. With the fight complete, we're able to free the Red Toad from his canvas prison and escort him to the elevator. He'll go into the lab while we head up to floor 6, Castle McFrights. As it happens, this ended up being one of the most frustrating floors thus far. It's all pretty simple fights and puzzles that require teamwork between Luigi and Guigi up until we reach the elevator cage room. On the lower level of this one, we need a key to move forward, so we gotta use the dark light on the doorway on the right side to reveal the door, which has three shiny spook bucks sitting right at its base. It's worth noting that if you die and respawn on a save where you're inside the next room, you cannot exit without being forced to collect two of those coins. That said, blowing those aside and heading through, we're faced with a puzzle where Guiji must pull down a barrier to block the crossbow men. Simple enough. After that, we cross a small stream and open a chest to get our key, and we're also showered with scare coins. Ouch. Luckily, I realized there's a strategy for situations like this. If we use Guiji to open the chest, we can mash the right analog stick to return him to the poltergeist before the shower of coins has a chance to touch him. Key in hand, we head back through the coffin door and face off against a pack of mini hammers, which can be taken out coinless as long as you steer clear of the rats and nearby spook bucks. From there, it's a gauntlet of fights and puzzles until we reach the boss battle against King McFright himself. You see, the only way to deal damage to his armor and horse is to blind him mid-charge and then use the suction shot and slam him into the ground. This spawns scare coins which absolutely love bouncing into Luigi. As a result, I spent absolutely way, way, way too long trying to come up with a consistent strategy to simultaneously take out the boss without collecting any coins or losing my own sanity. I'll admit I was retrying this boss for like an hour, but here are some tips I picked up. The boss always does laps around the arena, and if you either stand in the corner or the center, he will not touch you. Along with that, while they seem imposing at first, the crossbow bolts fired from the northern side of the arena have a very limited angle at which they can fire, which means that most of the shots can be ignored by doing absolutely nothing. For Luigi, that seems quite fitting. That said, the trick I ended up using to avoid the coins was not too different from the chest before, spawning Guiji, running Luigi away, and letting Guiji perform the slam and then immediately disappearing back into the poltergeist. It's like ding dong ditching but with more science. After every slam, I hung out in the corner until all that cash despawned, rinse and repeat. Once he's finally out of his armor and off his horse, it's a pretty straightforward fight and we can get our button and move on. From the castle, our next stop is Floor 7, Garden Suites. In this one, the button is actually on display for Luigi as soon as he enters the main atrium, but it's stolen by a plant. The journey up the stairs through the various rooms isn't all that hard, though I will note that the blooming suite located on the second floor is a serious pain. All of the flowers once flashed with a straw bulb will spit out cash towards Luigi, even while being held as weapons by the goobs. That's their actual name by the way, those blue guys, they're goobs. With how obnoxious this room ended up being, I let myself get resurrected by the Golden Bone to just get it over with. It's not a run ender, but it would have been super handy to have in the later bosses, which are much harder. Past that, the only other spot worth noting is in the Mushroom Suite, where there are a few spook bucks just laying in wait, hoping that you'll bounce into them without noticing. Luckily, Luigi can manipulate most objects through other objects. Neat. As for the boss, Dr. Potter, it's done basically as intended with little worry. Our next stop is Floor 8. Paranormal Productions. This one has four different movie sets which Luigi needs to navigate in order to retrieve the director's megaphone. If for some godforsaken reason you want to do this run yourself, save some headache and push away the gold sitting behind the castle set's TV in the main room. For whatever reason, Luigi will collect it when exiting the TV because hitboxes. As for the sets, getting the water into the bucket from the horse set is super simple, but retrieving the torch from the castle is a serious pain. You see, there's a bunch of spook bucks just sitting there, all around the torch. Since it's a curved wall with little room to navigate, pushing away the cache and retrieving the torch requires a lot of care. The camera angle does not help either. From there, assuming you already moved the gold behind the TV, you can take the torch over to the fire set, where there's a pretty straightforward fight, and then onto the micro set. This one is surprisingly tricky. If any of the packing peanuts come into contact with the torch, poof. They'll go up in flames, and down comes a bunch of scary coins. I carefully put the torch on the left side of the table, open the box, and walk the torch over, avoiding the peanuts. Once you have the megaphone, you're home free. The director, Morty, will not attack Luigi, but instead urge him to take part in a Godzilla-esque boss fight. There's no cash here, so it's a very simple and fun fight. Afterwards, he'll willingly give us the button and head into the editing room where he'll remain uncaptured because Morty is a good ghost who deserves to be free, and that's a fact. So, as soon as we reach the elevator to put the button in, Helen Gravely's cat named Polter Kitty shows up and steals it. 
The chase requires us to go through the fire set, as well as the blooming suite on floor 7 and the ivy bathroom. While super obnoxious, it's pretty simple to do cashless. As for floor 9 itself, the Unnatural History Museum is literally just a boss fight. A fun one at that. Some of the decorations will spit out cash when inevitably destroyed by Ugg possessed dinosaur, but that's really the only thing to worry about. Breaking the pattern, the button we get takes us all the way down to basement 2, Boiler Works. This is your Nintendo Corp mandated water level, which can be a bit annoying at times, though the rubber ducky raft is very, very cute. There's a lot of spook bucks along the path that Guiji can take, but with enough diligence, you can once more reach the boss absolutely broke. Clem the Mechanic is a neat fight, which is also devoid of any money, so it's easily done. Heading back up to floor 10, we have Tomb Suites. This one, you guessed it, is a desert level. It even has sand physics. This one was pretty fun, until it suddenly wasn't. As it happens, Nintendo made this pyramid tomb filled with traps an absolute nightmare, but for the wrong reasons. Every spider, if flashed, turns into money. Snakes, if vacuumed up, turns into money. Seemingly every grain of sand hides a wealth of treasure that rival even that of Fort Knox. That said, I did develop a few strategies. First off, in general, it's always better to push the sand rather than actually sucking it up. You see, by pushing the sand, you greatly reduce the chance of an errant coin getting vacuumed up while also doing the job of revealing whatever object that you're going for. That said, the snake chamber isn't too tough. The skill chamber is a whole other story. In this one, there are piles of treasure on both sides of the room, as well as in the bowl where the treasure is weighed. Basically, every object in this room is considered money except the vases and the golden cube thingies that we need to solve the puzzle. That's seriously annoying. Still, it's quite doable. First order business is to clear out the bowl, where the weight difference between the small bits of treasure and the golden cubes makes separating them fairly easy. As for the vases and cubes in the side, I actually realized that the sand physics can be friend as well as foe. By pushing the sand pile towards the wall, I was able to simultaneously cover the smaller bits of treasure while creating a ramp for the cube to slide down. As for the vases, they can be moved into a safe place by using the suction shot and then very carefully, slowly, dragging them away. With all the items in place and the bowl cleared, solving the puzzle within the time limit is easy and we can leave victorious with a nice, empty wallet. And then there's the jewel chamber. This one is basically hell on earth. At least it felt like it for the two hours I spent trying to succeed without collecting any money. Eventually, I did, but I, I didn't feel all that accomplished to be honest. You see, this room has you searching for six different gems hiding by the piles of sand which must be shot into place in the wall to stop the poison gas that leaks out. The poison gas hurts Luigi every some odd seconds, which means that the time and Luigi's health is basically one and the same. Luckily, there are a number of hearts hidden throughout the room, but there's an even greater amount of gold down there as well. It took a while, but eventually I came up with a trick I'll call the Double Trouble Push and Pull. Or not, because that's a dumb name. Either way, basically I can drop Luigi who will automatically be behind Luigi facing forward. I then put Luigi into push duty while I vacuum up the sand, or pull, as Luigi. It's not a perfect strategy, but the Uigi who is doing the pushing is closer than the Uigi doing the pulling, which means that the sand gets sucked up while the gold does not. Another strategy I found but didn't fully utilize in my successful run is that the trigger for the cutscene and thus the poison gas activating is just inside the room. That means that if you're very careful, you can nudge Luigi over the threshold of the room and suck away a considerable amount of sand before triggering the gas. However, this is super tedious to do on every single attempt, which is why I eventually gave up on it. With all that said, let's get on to the successful strategy I used, which is spinning. Yeah, it's dumb, but it works. It's perfect for a Luigi game. With that and two hours of memorizing gem and gold locations, you get this stupid masterpiece of a run. There was some sort of gold star after that one, but obviously one with no monetary value. The following fight in the main chamber and the boss fight against Serpsy, Ser Ser Serpsy? I think that's her name, whatever, is challenging but very doable without touching any of those pesky coins. As for floor 11, the Twisted Sweets, 
It's done basically as intended, just taking care when fighting in close quarters. The boss fight against Nikki, Lindsay, and Ginny is pretty fun, mainly because there's no money to worry about. Also, yes, those are the ghost's names, because that's what the game told me. Onwards, floor 12 is the Spectral Catch, which is pretty short. And there is, of course, a catch. The path forward is blocked by the bow of a ship. In order to get through this, we need to head back to the lab where we learn that one of the toads was sent on a fetch quest to the boiler works where he immediately got spooked. <laughs> After heading down to the boiler works and rescuing him from the clutches of a tall wall, take the shot! Uh, there is an escort mission to get back to the lab on foot with the gizmo in hand. Unfortunately, this retread of the sewers made it especially painful because, for some ridiculous reason, they made it so that Toad can collect money for you. Not just that, but his AI is so annoying, as he'll go running off the second a ghost gets close, often right into a piece of gold that you intentionally push as far away as possible. I had to quit out to the main menu and retry so many times because of him. I'm not bitter. Okay, yes I am bitter. Anyways, not just that, but as soon as you break through this wall, you have to set him up to collect the door handle. When I did this, he dropped down and sprinted right through the pile of trash, collecting some money with his grubby little shoes. Luckily, if you stand really close to where he lands, he won't go anywhere. Also, did I mention that you can suck him up and shoot him at stuff? Eventually, I started carrying him like this for his own good. He can't go running off when he can't run. After turning in that gizmo to EGAD, we gain the ability to use the absolute biggest suck. As long as we plug it into an outlet first. Thankfully, when doing this on the ship blocking the path on floor 12, there's no money that comes out, so we're free to continue and battle against Captain Fishhook without much trouble, as there's lots of space and not a lot of money to worry about. Right after that fun time, we head up to floor unlucky number 13, the fitness center. In this one, the boss is just out of reach in the pool, so we have to go through a series of rooms to reach him. The lobby and locker rooms, while annoyingly filled with ghosts and money, is totally doable. The weight room has two tough hammer ghosts that you have to fight, but very little money laying around. The training room is a little bit tricky. You have to collect a key by running on one of the two treadmills. But if you use Luigi, you won't be able to get out of the way in time in order to avoid all those scare coins, but with Guigi doing a ding dong ditch, it's much easier. Next door is the yoga room, where you must either unroll or roll up the yoga mats in order to match the posters on the wall. That's easily done, opening up a hidden door to an exterior balcony. Here there's some spook bucks just sitting on the inside corner, as well as a bunch of coins on the path. With a bit of care, you can cross the collapsing walkway and reach the chest without issue, where opening it rewards us with a pearl right in the face. Also the key, which auto saves. That's pretty annoying. No worries, I'll just reset and use Guiji instead. But those with keen eyes might have noticed that there's oddly placed puddles of water blocking the chest. Water melts Guiji, so we can't reach the chest. You might be starting to realize that this chest has a serious issue, so I'll just come out and say it. I spent the better half of an entire day trying to avoid this one single pearl. I tried having Luigi standing still and hoping that the randomness of the pearl trajectory would make it miss. No luck. I tried quickly moving in any direction to get away, but Luigi stays in place for way too long to avoid it. I tried spawning Luigi close by and either blowing or sucking away the pearl from Luigi, but it's not affected by the vacuum until it's basically already touching Luigi. I realized that you can spawn Luigi on the ledge if you position yourself correctly, and I tried to have him grab the key as it spawned, but before the pearl touched Luigi. No luck. I tried positioning Luigi just like so, and absolutely mashing the interact button with Luigi, as maybe there would be a few frames where he can open the chest before melting. Absolutely nothing. I even found that the series of box-like pillows in the yoga room can be painstakingly brought out onto the balcony and across the walkway as Luigi doesn't make the path collapse. Using these, I tried to either block Luigi, which doesn't work, or the pearl itself, which also doesn't work, because for some god dang reason, the pearl can roll through certain solid objects, which includes the boxes. I even tried using the boxes to get Luigi onto the ledge and then try spawning Luigi onto the chest, but it's still nothing. As a last ditch effort, I even tried to very, very carefully position the boxes to form a pathway for Luigi to the chest. The first box he touches after leaving the ledge is fine, but the moment an atom of his gooeyness moves over the space in between the boxes, he melts. I hate to say it, but I don't think it's possible, at least with my current knowledge. The game has been out for just about a week at the time of making this video, so it's very possible that there's already been something found, or something that will be found, some sort of trick, glitch, exploit, something. 
that lets you avoid this pearl. Currently, I think it's impossible, but if you can figure out a way, please tell me, because as it stands, we can unfortunately answer the question, can you beat Luigi's Mansion 3 without collecting any money with a crestfallen no? However, that doesn't mean we can't still beat the game without having any money. You see, one mechanic I've yet to mention is that during combat, every time Luigi takes damage, some coins will pop out of him like some kind of blue hedgehog. After giving up on avoiding the pearl, I immediately visited Castle McFrights, where I spent like 10 minutes repeatedly taking damage, dying, respawning, and doing it all over again until eventually I was broke. Before long, we can head back up to the fitness center with cobwebs in our wallets and determination in our hearts to see the challenge through the end, because even if we can't beat the game without collecting any money, we can still beat the game without having any money. Luckily, the room right after the cursed chest is very doable without collecting any other money, and the boss fight is equally as straightforward, though I do think Johnny Deep End makes for a pretty lackluster fight. Anyways, moving on, the dance hall on 414 is just like the Great Stage and Museum. One boss fight and you're done. Also, the goobs actually dab at the start. Gross. Otherwise, it's easily done without collecting any money. Finally, we reached our final stop on this Tower of Terror, Floor 15, the Master Suites. Here, we finally come face to screen with Helen Gravely, the owner of this lame hotel. Speaking of screen, in order to move through the door and reach the next set of rooms, we must raise the projector screen. This is done by sending Guigi into the decent maintenance room, where he has to travel up a pipe and yank on a pulley. I won't sugarcoat it, this is one of the other spots where we cannot avoid any of the coins. Remember how I mentioned those weird hitboxes with the Paranormal Productions Castle TV? Same idea. While Guigi is traveling through the pipe, five of the coins are close enough that he will always collect them. Unfortunately, Guigi's poltergeist doesn't reach far enough to move them out of the way. The suction shot doesn't do anything. I even tried abusing the sand physics in the nearby decoration pit thing to get Luigi high enough in an attempt to push the coins from all the way over there, but I just couldn't get it to work. Much like with the aforementioned Pearl, I'm sure some kind of trick will be found that makes this possible, but for now, I spent another trip down to Castle McFrights to atone for my sins. I'm sure that somewhere there's a bottle of Canadian barbecue sauce that just felt a disturbance in the force. Once we actually get past the projector screen, there's four separate rooms that we must navigate to collect the jeweled keys to open the path forwards to the fight against Helen Gravely. Those rooms and subsequent ghost fights are all doable without collecting any money. They're also very deadly because we're at the end of the game and it's suddenly surprisingly difficult at times. Helen Gravely herself makes for a wonderful boss fight as there's no coins, bills, or little golden figurines to get in the way. Once she's defeated, we're able to release Mario from his prison. This would feel like a wholesome moment if it wasn't for the fact that seeing Luigi run around for this whole playthrough like a normal human being, Mario's speed and jumpiness is oddly unsettling by comparison. He also loves spooking Luigi. No wonder this guy has anxiety. Still, we follow him up the final leg of the journey, which takes us to the very top of the last resort hotel. It's here where, surprise, surprise, King Boo is all mad that we took his little ghosty woosties, and it's one final battle for all the marbles. This boss fight is pretty difficult, like, in general. With no money to our name and that one golden bone being wasted early in the run, we have to get through all three phases without dying. It's definitely doable, I did it, but extra carries needed in the final phase where those glorified spiked confetti balls can drop junk, bombs, as well as money. With enough teamwork, we can, in fact, make the dream work, taking out King Boo once and for all, and all that's left is the jewel from his crown. This seriously worried me since the first game forced you to pick up his crown which was worth 5,000 gold. Luckily, in the ensuing cutscene, the jewel just poofs out of existence. With that, the hotel is ruined, the ghosts are homeless, and I'm completely broke. Now bonded over our total lack of wealth, Luigi the Ghost and Egad set out to making them a replacement hotel with all the money that I do not have. Now drum roll please, what rank do we get for beating the game while completely broke? With zero dollars? Is it rank A? Is it rank B? Is it rank F? Surprise, surprise, it's rank C! <laughs> okay, sure, why not? It's a bit anticlimactic, but there you go. We have beaten the game without any money. Seeing as how I went into this run blind, it made for a pretty fun challenge. There were definitely some spots that made me want to pull out my hair, but it definitely forced me to play the game in a unique way, which I think is the goal. Also, hopefully, it made for an entertaining challenge video. Thank you so much for watching. That said, I'd also like to thank my channel members for being super awesome, especially Chris Street Huntress for being a super fan. That's about it for this one. I'll see you in the next video.